Hello and welcome, this is Machine Dana. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can set up event lists in your stream. Event lists are really cool things. They show like a, a reel of events that are happening on your, on your stream. And that's things like bits, donations, followers, subscribers, and things like that. Uh, with the event list, you can fully customize different elements of it to include or exclude things that you want uh, or don't want. Uh, you can also customize the layout. You can customize the fonts, the size, the design. There's a lot of flexibility included within the event list, including how frequently those things show, whether it's there permanently, whether or not it fades away and things like that. I'll show you all those settings within this video. Event lists probably work pretty well as an alternative to labels. Uh, I will show the difference between the two things in this video, but labels tend to be more permanent things that happen on your stream that are there on screen all the time, whereas events is more almost like randomly generated based on what's happening on your stream. With the labels, you have a subscriber that's there all the time. You will always have the, the last bits donation. You will always have the last follower, and you can interchange those or remove ones that you, you don't want with labels. With the event list, if you get three or four people in a row that donate bits, 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 you will see three people that are on the events list that all show those events. Rather than with labels, you would only see the most recent donation of bits. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the settings, uh, how you can install it as a browser source on Streamlabs OBS, although this does work on other softwares as well, not just on um, Streamlabs OBS. The online widgets generally tend to integrate significantly better if you're using both Streamlabs Online and also Streamlabs OBS, the software, but it's not mandatory to use the software. If you find this video useful, please thumbs up the video as it helps other people that want to find a similar video to this. If you want to see more tutorials and things like this, I also do Stream Deck tutorials and other stream advice videos. Click the button below to subscribe and welcome in. Finally, I do stream six out of seven days per week at six o'clock UK time. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana if you want to see any of these things in action on my stream. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first looking at this, you, you want to navigate to streamlabs.com and under the widgets section, you will see a number of different widgets that are available to you by default from Streamlabs. And I've done lots of other videos about, for instance, uh, chat box or media sharing uh, and view counts, lots of other videos. Uh, so please feel free to browse my Streamlabs videos. In this video, we're, we're interested in the events list. As you can see here, the example we see is followers, bits, uh, a donation and subs. But the reality is on your stream, those things are not all gonna happen in sequential order. Uh, you may get lots of bits donations or lots of subs that happen, and you may want to just see the most recent events in general on your stream. I wouldn't personally recommend having that and the stream labels, because the thing you've got to bear in mind when you're a streamer is you've only got a very limited amount of screen space, so we'll call it like premium real estate space on your stream. Um, and, and in general, it's always best to keep things as simple as you possibly can. And I, so I'll show you an example uh, using my own stream labels of what they look like. So these, what you see below, are actually stream labels and it's fixed on the subscriber, the top donation and the la latest cheer. They will be there all the time on my particular stream and they take up a limited amount of real estate. If I then also had, let's say above me, a feed of the latest events happening that's actually going to start to take up quite a lot of space you you just got to be careful on what you do and don't do you guys can do completely what you want what you then need to do is log in with your credentials and you can use your twitch facebook or your youtube gaming credentials to log into Streamlabs if you don't already have a Streamlabs account. There are two ways that you can set this up uh, if you're using Streamlabs OBS. If you're not using Streamlabs OBS, you have to set it up in Streamlabs Online first, and then you need to copy the widget URL is into your software as a browser source, your streaming software. As we can see here, this is just a preview example and you can customize all of these elements. And we can also later on in the video, we'll look at custom themes as well. So here we've got, you can see donations, we've got subs, uh, we've got bits examples of these different people that are triggering those events. First, you can choose the, the theme itself and there's loads of different options. I wanna go with something a little bit more retro or honeycomb, it's quite interesting. So let's say we want to go with honeycomb. Uh, there's the theme color here that you can choose. So let's say we want to go with something a little bit more honeycomb-y, like orange. So there you go. It's quite a nice design already in among itself. And now here you choose what events you actually want to be included in the reel of events. So many people choose to not have follows. Um, I think when you first start off streaming, your first one to 200 follows, uh, it's good to have 
acknowledgement of those because you're growing and that's one of the most important things when you're first starting out. As you become a little bit more established, you then start to focus a little bit more on content and a little bit more on, on um, kind of monetization uh, and less so the growth, although the growth will always be important to you. So we can choose to include or exclude followers. Um, so I'm going to exclude followers. Merch, I don't have merch on my particular channel, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, hosts and raids, probably going to probably gonna put raids on there because uh, I think that's quite a nice one to incentivize ra raids a little bit. Now you might want to just set a minimum value for the for the bits for it to actually trigger on this particular show reel. Remember it's taking up that space on your stream so you want to be careful at, at kind of how easy it is to actually take that space up. So you might want to set a minimum bits, um, let's say for instance 200 bits. Minimum for raids as well, some people will sometimes raid with one or two people and whilst the thought is lovely obviously, again it's taking up premium screen space that could be taken up by something else that is arguably more valid so for instance you may want to say right minimum raids of at least 10 people and then the max number of events now this is just the max number of events that actually shows in the list so normally like three to four is a good idea here but you might only want to have like two or three in this case we'll see this will show only two so let's just set that to uh, maybe let's say four events uh, the text color itself we set it there to white um, I'm going to say, actually, I'd quite like the contrast of a slightly yellowy white. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, that's interesting enough. If I was having a very citrusy, zesty theme, then that would work pretty well on mine. And then you can choose the font as well. I tend to use one um, on my screen, on my stream, which is called Orbitron. Uh, that's just, just a font that I tend to use. It's a little bit more futuristic looking, a bit more poppy. And then we can choose the font size as well. I'm going to just reduce this a little bit. Again, this is all personal preference. And then we've got different animations that you can play where it bounces in, bounces out. And you can just play around with these. There's a lot of them. And then there's a speed that you can set as well in, and I think this is milliseconds. Let's just try 500. This will speed it up quite a lot. This just means if you're getting multiple events happen at once, it can either spread it out more and elongate it, or it can do it quite quickly if you'd like to do that. Let's just see what putting this up to 2,500 does. There you go. See how it slowly came up there? That's the speed of it. And then we've got the fade time. So this is set it, setting it to, to zero will mean that the widget will always show on your stream. Whereas if you have a fade time, for instance, 10 seconds, after 10 seconds, the whole widget will fade out completely until the next event, in which case the whole widget will appear again with the most recent events and the newest event that's triggered that to refade. As an example, let's just show this as a, as a three second fade. We have an event that happens or a number of events that happen. Hopefully this will now freeze and then disappear. Now it's not showing it in this example. Yeah, there you go. It showed it in the example. So after three seconds, that faded away. I'm going to have it in my case doesn't fade away and stays on screen all the time. These are uh, to keep the events history, different options here. Flipping X and Y, I believe what that does is just rather than going from top to bottom, it goes from bottom to top. Let's just see what flipping Y looks like. Yeah, they come up from the bottom. Uh, now you've got the option to enable or disable some custom HTML, CSS or JavaScript. If you've got any friends or whatever that are good with HTML, CSS or JavaScript, or, or if you have a highly customized set of themes on your stream, then you may want to look at these um, and, and apply the themes and CSS styles into this particular widget. And that just includes the fonts, the colors, the sizings, the spacings, the padding, and all the usual stuff you'd expect. I'm fairly happy with that now, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna save the settings at the bottom, and I'm now gonna copy the widget URL to my clipboard. I get a confirmation here that the URL is copied to my clipboard. So in Streamlabs OBS, there are two ways that you can add that function. If you are using Streamlabs OBS, you can add this as a event list here. The widgets are pulled in from the online service from Streamlabs, and essentially this is like a container that just integrates through the API to pull in the widgets that are available. And obviously with that, it will pull in all the settings that you've already set online. If you've not already set the settings online, by adding an event list here, you can set those settings that we've just been through in the widget within Streamlabs OBS. So just to show how that looks, if we add a event list here, add source, we can name it here, test, add the source. It will appear here as a source and that's exactly what we've done. It's pulled in all of the settings that we've created. We can now move this around. We can uh, resize it and so on. And these are the most recent events that have taken place on my channel. Let's say for example, I wanted it to be above my camera i could place it there and if we don't like any of the settings we can change them and the way you do that is right click on the widget if you're in streamlabs obs 
and you can change the settings here. For instance, I might go, well, I actually want three events here and I don't want uh, bits in there. That's now removed that extra layer and it's removed the bits and that's now what the, the new version of it looks like. Tidy it up a little bit. You can use your arrow keys to fine tune this, pressing up, down and left, right, and that'll just micro move sources within Streamlabs OBS. You can also disable the event list using this here if at any point you don't want it. Another way of doing this, add a new source. If you're not in Streamlabs OBS, these widgets will not import into the software, in which case you simply need to add it as a browser source, which will then look at the web hooks. And because it's integrated to uh, your Twitch or your YouTube or your Facebook gaming, it will pull that data through the browser source via the web hooks and the API. Click that, add source. We can name the source. We first want to set it as a new source, add that source. By default, you'll see the placeholder image, which is just Streamlabs' placeholder image here. You need to paste it, paste in the widget URL that we copied earlier to clipboard. Make sure that you don't give away any detail about that widget because it's got sensitive uh, key information about your stream. I must admit, this orange is kind of making me feel a little bit more radiant <laughs> above me. I don't know if it's just the contrast of colors, but I look like I've got a better tan. Maybe I need to keep this on my stream. <laughs> you can now set around, play around with the width and the height. You can have it stored as a local file, use custom frame rates and various other settings. These are standard settings for all browser sources, so this is not specific to the event list. When I click done, that's now pulled in that information based on the settings that we have. Now note here that we made some changes to the OBS widget version within Streamlabs OBS, and those changes have pushed back up to the online portal, which is now stored in the cloud. So when we've then come to add a new browser source, it's pulled those new settings in and placed them on the browser source. These are essentially a replica of each other because it's essentially using the same data to push, uh, including both the settings and also the events themselves. Now, the final thing I'm just gonna look at here is the custom stream overlays. So if you're fortunate enough to have an upgrade of Prime Streamlabs Prime on your Streamlabs account. And if you look within the widgets list here, or widgets, and you actually click on the events list, there are some examples of uh, some event lists that are themed. So these essentially carry the design and the CSS and the HTML theme of whatever overlay you may have installed. It'll pull in all of the same designs, but match it to an event list instead of it being something else. And I'll show you a good example. We'll look at the overtime theme widgets by Hexam. The widget themes here, you'll see there's an event list example here, and that is purely a browser source, exactly as we've seen. The difference is it's just used the custom CSS settings that I showed earlier to match this overlay attributes, such as the font, the colors, the spacing, the padding, and all of that kind of stuff. So that means if you've got an installed theme on your Streamlabs OBS, you're able to match the event list to the existing designs. You do this by clicking install. Installing that will give you the option within the theme to create the widget, and you will copy the URL in the exact same way. You can also go back to themes. You can click the filter button here. So when you're searching for new themes, you can click on this filter button to make sure that the theme that you go for does have event lists on them. As an example, we can look at uh, whatever this one is here. It's a pretty funny looking one. And this one here is the event list. If you do upgrade to Streamlabs Prime, and there are many benefits. Uh, I'm not associated with Streamlabs, but I do use it. If you want to get money off upgrading to Streamlabs Prime, literally you will get money off by using my affiliate code below. And it's like 10 or 20% off the price of Streamlabs Prime. So feel free to do that if you're not already upgraded. So click and install would install these as themes. The final thing just to manage those themes, you can click on manage theme here. And I'll show you an example of that on alert box. There's manage themes here on alert box and so on. Even on chat box, I think they've got managed themes. So there are chat box themes that you can get as well. You've essentially got theme profiles. For me, I use like a synth wave theme. Uh, so I'm able to activate that. And I can create a widget theme here and go through the process of doing that and save the settings. And it just means that you can have multiple types of alerts for different profiles. And therefore, you're able to copy and paste the custom CF CSS from that. And what that will do is it will literally enable some custom CSS for that specific theme in here. So there you have it. That's how you can have event lists on your stream. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Take care.